Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. When Kyle rejects Jack's olive branch, Faith leaps to Lucy's aid with disastrous consequences. According to spoilers on The Young and the Restless, Billy Abbott, Jason Thompson, needed to address Adam Newman, Mark Grossman, first. But Billy has to handle a much more pressing matter following that altercation. It makes sense to hold Adam responsible. Billy, however, is forced to face the fact that Chelsea Lawson, Melissa Claire Egan, bears whole responsibility for Adam's reappearance and her continual refusal to acknowledge the truth. Given everything that has transpired between them, including the cover-up of Delia Abbott's, Sophie Polono, unintentional death, which led to a lifelong rift between the two men, Adam is an obvious target. Adam Newman is considered the issue. Adam is the father of Connor Newman, Judah Mackey. That's what Billy and Sally Spectra, Courtney Hope, made themselves believe is the link that connects Chelsea and Adam. It was impossible to confine the Baltimore, Maryland, catastrophe. Chelsea was ultimately compelled by her shame to tell Billy what had transpired. She has been under pressure from him to release her burdens, and it has succeeded. Billy was able to let out some of the emotions he was holding from his shouting session at Chancellor Park during the acerbic encounter at Adam and Sally's condo. But Adam was just the showman. Most remarkably, Billy and Chelsea were able to rebuild trust. He helped her when she was having mental instability, saving her from nearly falling off a building. Billy previously deviated from reality by projecting a different personality type in a plot reminiscent of a film noir. A few of those scenes used black and white film with images of an adult Delia conversing with her father. Billy, who has been called a screw-up for years and called a Billy boy by Victor, is determined to disprove everyone. His attempt to prove that he can forgive Johnny Abbott, Paxton Mishkind, the person who tricked him into bearing his child, is one aspect of his journey. Another is his reunion with Chelsea. The audience is aware that Victor paid Egan's character to pull off the ruse. Adam is therefore completely locked into staying close to Victor's unhealthy tree. Chelsea Lawson should be given another chance. Adam is not now the love of Chelsea's life. She does have feelings for him, but Connor is the reason they are connected. Billy would like to think that all of this is true. However, everyone may relate to or empathize with him. He must determine whether there is still hope with Chelsea after being wronged. She loves her kid and Billy with all of her heart, and she is a good soul. Hopefully, that one impetuous night in Baltimore won't cause this nice couple to break up. This gripping plot requires a lot of drama to be resolved before any conclusions are drawn. Chance and Summer later shared a kiss in the foyer and decided to go out more frequently. As Kyle went by, he inquired as to whether Summer had thought about their chat. Summer recommended that they speak with their attorneys to create a new joint custody plan that prioritizes Harrison's needs. Good night, Kyle said, and he'd put everything up in the morning. Faith reiterated at the cottage what she had heard Sharon say, will you please just go away? Faith insisted on knowing the person her mother had been speaking with. Sharon said she'd dozed off on the couch, dreamed a horrible dream, and said some words while unconscious. Faith cast a quick glance at the cluttered sofa. Faith questioned Sharon's dishonesty. After asking herself why she would lie, Sharon went to the kitchen to brew some tea. Faith insisted that Sharon couldn't have fallen asleep on the couch while forcing her to look at the mess. Sharon surmised that she might have dozed off anywhere because she had been so exhausted. Since everyone liked Sharon and wanted to be of assistance to her, Faith hoped her mother would be truthful. Faith thought about giving Nick or Mariah a call but Sharon insisted she was okay. Sharon apologized to Faith for not being truthful with her, citing her visions of Cassie. Sharon acknowledged that she had been having a lot of mental turmoil and that she had been having nightmares about Cameron. Sharon informed Faith that she hadn't spoken out because she didn't want to bring up unpleasant memories of what Cameron had done to them, which shocked Faith. When Faith asked about the nightmares, Sharon pretended that they were merely a madman's confused gibberish. When Sharon mentioned that she had been urging Cameron to leave, Faith inquired as to whether he had. 
On occasion, Sharon answered, conjecturing that it was a consequence of getting used to her new medications. Sharon pushed Faith to go out with her pals and promised to call her doctor again in the morning regarding her dosage. Faith invited herself over for a cup of tea, but the idea of her daughter watching her made Sharon laugh. I'm in trouble, was the message that rang on Faith's phone from Lucy. Could you please assist me? Observing Faith's worried expression, Sharon inquired as to what was wrong. Faith disclosed that Lucy had surreptitiously left the house during her grounding. Faith had instructed her to return home, but Faith had lately gotten a message informing her that Lucy was in distress and wished to speak with her. Lucy was unable to phone her parents, so she sent another message pleading with Faith to come get her. When Faith showed Sharon the message, she became concerned that Lucy had done something foolish because she had been offended by Faith's remarks about their lack of friendship. Lucy was young and fragile, Sharon said, and Faith had only one option. To find out where Lucy was, Faith wrote back. Lucy was located by Faith at the park. Lucy whimpered that she was sorry and thanked Faith for coming. When Faith looked down to saw a bottle of vodka, she began to wonder why Lucy was still there. Lucy expressed her displeasure about her health. Faith insisted on knowing how Lucy had obtained the alcohol. Lucy admitted that she had entered a bar covertly and taken the bottle while the bartender wasn't looking. Lucy thought Faith despised her. Faith expressed her confusion, citing Lucy's declaration that she was returning home and would no longer consume alcohol. Faith threw the bottle in the garbage. Lucy babbled on about how seeing Faith had made her unhappy since Faith could never be friends with someone like her. Faith reaffirmed that although Lucy was a wonderful child, the teenager should make companions who were her own age. Lucy cried out that her parents would kill her as Faith got ready to call them. Faith urged Lucy to take responsibility for her actions. In an attempt to sneak into bed before her parents realized she was gone, Lucy begged Faith to take her home. Faith chastised Lucy for enlisting her in yet another deception. If Faith simply drove her home, Lucy vowed she would never ask for another favor. Daniel mentioned to Heather that they hadn't gone out lately at the jazz lounge, and he recommended that they take Lucy there as soon as the teenager is no longer grounded. Since Lucy had become gloomy and aloof after the concert, Heather questioned whether their daughter would ever speak to them once more. According to Daniel, Lucy had sent in a text message earlier, indicating that she wasn't entirely grumpy. Daniel had a suspicion that she had recognized she had gotten away with it because it was her first infraction. Heather pointed out to him that Lucy had lied to them on other occasions as well. Although Lucy had made mistakes, Daniel was confident that she was aware of their efforts to support her and that they had been making necessary corrections. The frequent migrations between different cities and nations had obviously taken a toll, and Heather wondered if their own decisions had led them there. Finding your people is never simple, as Heather bemoaned, and she reasoned that Lucy's main concern was becoming Faith's friend.